All right, let's go ahead and evaluate this expression here. And to do that, we're going to use the order of operations. So we're looking first at any parentheses. And that is the first step in the order of operations. Now, parentheses can include absolute values sometimes. And sometimes instead of the parentheses we see in this problem, it may look something like a bracket instead. So just be aware of that. They may look different it's sometimes, and absolute values, of course, act in a much different way. And also in this problem, we have other sets of parentheses, like this one. So inside the parentheses, we're looking to start a whole brand new set of order of operations. So in the parentheses, are there any other parentheses? Well, in none of these three sets of parentheses, is there any other parentheses? Are there any other exponents in the parentheses? Because that's the second step in the order of operations. And the answer to that one is no. There are no exponents inside the parentheses. Yes, there is some exponents on the outside of the parentheses. But again, we're just focusing on the inside. So since there's no exponents, next comes multiplication or division from left to right, which we cannot see any of that inside these parentheses either. So what comes after multiplication or division? Well, then we're looking for addition or subtraction from left to right. And it doesn't matter which order that is in. If we look in this set of parentheses, there is no addition or subtraction. And same with this one. That's why we leave those alone until we have finished with this one, which does have addition and, sub well, subtraction specifically. And that's why some people will say this is PEMDAS, but we have to be careful because in the second to last and the last step, it's you could have division first in that order. So again, we're just looking from left to right. So right here, we're looking at 4 minus 7. And that changes the expression now where we have that red negative 3. So that takes care of the parentheses. Next, we need to use the exponents, right? So if we start in the top, not that we have to start there, but we can. Let's look at this 4 to the power of 3, which would be 4 times 4 times 4. And if we do that, we have 4 times 4, which is 16. So in other words, we would have 16 times 4, which if we multiply these, right, 16 times 4, we have a 4 and a 2 to carry 4 times 1 is 4 plus the 2 is 64. And so I've replaced now the 64 where the 4 cubed would be in that expression. And then we'll subtract that negative 2 to the power of 5. So what is negative 2 to the power of 5? So if we expanded this negative 2 to the power of 5, this is what it would look like here in the purple. So the first negative 2 times negative 2, that would give us 4. Then multiplied by this negative 2 would be negative 8. Multiply that by another negative 2 would be a positive 16. Times this negative 2 would be a negative 32. So I placed that negative 32 where that negative 2 to the power of 5 was in the expression. Now we don't do anything with this 5 minus 3 right here. And by the order of operations, we can't do that first anyways because this is 3 times that negative 3 squared. So let's go ahead and look at that negative 3 squared. So that would be negative 3 times negative 3, which would give us a positive 9 because we have two negatives. And when we're multiplying and dividing negatives, if we have an even number as we do there, it gives us a positive answer. So that gives me this new expression. And we have eliminated all of the exponents. So then let's look from left to right at multiplication or division. In the numerator, there is no multiplication or division. But in the denominator, there is. So the numerator is going to stay the same way that it is right now. So let's go ahead and look at this 3 times 9 here. 3 times 9 is 27. So I've got that put in. And then let's look at 5 times 2 as well. Well, that would give us 10. And of course, we have plus between those. And this is our new expression. 
So, let's go ahead and evaluate 64 minus negative 32. Now we have to be careful when subtracting or even adding negatives, really. Uh, since this is subtracting a negative, the negative is telling us that we're going to have to do the opposite of minus. So we're really going to end up adding these two numbers. And 64 plus 32 would be 696 there. So in the denominator now, from or the numerator rather, with that 64 minus negative 32, I have 96. And we can go ahead and look at the denominator as well. And here in the denominator, I have 5 minus 27 plus 10. And this is addition and subtraction from left to right. And we can see that we have this subtraction here first. So I've got to do 5 minus 27. And since I'm taking away a number bigger than what I have, I know I'm going to end up in the negatives. And I can just essentially take away 5 from the 27 here. So that would give me a negative 22. But I still have the plus 10 as well. So to solve this, uh, again, I'm, I have a big negative, and I'm adding a positive. So what that means is I know at least that the answer is going to be, when I combine these, it's going to be negative. But how does that work? Well, we're essentially canceling 10 negatives with those 10 positives out of that negative 22. So really, we can take 22 and minus the 10. And that will tell us that we have a 12, but it would be negative because we know that 22 was a bigger negative than the positives that we had. So that's going to equal negative 12, which goes in the denominator like this. So we have to consider now, what is a fraction? Fraction is actually division, and the fraction line here between the two numbers is division, so we really have 96 divided by negative 12. Now since we only have one negative, we know that the answer is going to be negative. And I can put that over here as well. And what is 96 divided by 12? 12 goes into 96 8 times. Because 8 times 12 is 96. So we would subtract this out and have 0 remaining. And we can see then that the final answer here would be negative 8.